Hello everybody out there, this is Shane Lambert, I'm a freelance writer and I publish a lot of my stuff at movietvtechgeeks.com. I've been writing at that site since ah, early 2015 I think, I'd have to double check that but I'm pretty sure it's been two and a half years here. Um, I just want to talk about some of the recent articles that I wrote. Well, this is the website here and I wrote this one. I'll get to that one later. Uh, let's see. I'm going to click on it just so I can click on my name. Bring up all the articles. So, hockey, tennis, it's 90% of it. And then, what have you? Uh, anything that I kind of feel like uh, if I have an idea on something. So, Let's see, ones that are still kind of pertinent today, I guess the Maria Sharapova suspension. Um, I made an argument that she was suspended in a man's world. Um, so I'll click on this article. There's a photo of Sharapova. There's the web link. So this was an article from about 10 days ago in April. Uh, there's Sharapova at her speech where she admitted that she was suspended, or pardon me, that she tested positive. Uh, in this article, I remember just comparing the length of her suspension, which was 14, 15 months, um, to the length of the suspension of some other athletes um, since she tested positive. So the background, she tested positive for meldonium at the 2016 Australian Open, um, and at that time, the drug the banned substance had actually only been banned for a number of weeks. It wasn't uh, wasn't the most egregious substance abuse, if you ask me. Um, but nonetheless, she should be held responsible. That said, I, I thought the length of time that she got was too much. And like for for example, Starling Marte got three months for using Nandrolone. Um, Joaquim Noah in the NBA, 20 games, that's like a month and a half. And there was a football player who got suspended a short time. So I, I, I did see the need to suspend her, but I didn't see why she had to be suspended for 15 months. And I argued that it was mainly uh, due to her status as one of the more success, pardon me, the most successful women, women's athlete in terms of commercial success, not in terms of athletic prowess. She's not as good as Serena Williams. However, she does get more money in endorsements, so the commercial aspect, I felt she was taken out largely because of that. And I, I, didn't, I didn't really think that something that actually might have been an honest mistake deserved 15 months. I thought it deserved maybe three to six months, and that's what that article talks about. Uh, if you want to read it, I don't make too flattering statements about people that... Uh, rip into her and uh, like Wozniacki and Radwanska, I thought of some nice nicknames for them. Um, but on the matter of her wild card debate with Sharapova, this is what I wrote. If, for example, American on, or I'll back up a little bit actually. No, I'll read that part, sorry. If, for example, American Andre Agassi wanted a wild card into ATP Atlanta 2015, that's a 250 level tournament later this summer, then he'd probably get it at the ripe old age of 47. Don't believe me? A former world number one in, Austri in Austrian, Tomas Muster, got into the ATP Vienna 2011 tournament with a wild card at the nimble age of 44. It's not ranking merit that gets you wild cards, it's how you dri help drive ticket sales, TV ratings, and media coverage. So there's a debate about whether Sharapova deserves wild cards um, based on her ranking and the fact that she was tested positive for doping. Um, wild cards have never been awarded on merit. There's no merit system to wild cards. They are awarded to people who will help the tournament succeed commercially. And I don't think it's fair to apply a double standard. You can argue that wild cards shouldn't exist. I wouldn't have a problem with that too much, to be honest. But they do exist, and so long as they exist, I think Sharapova should 
be treated like anybody else and if she can help a tournament out commercially they they gave a wild card to Thomas Mooster at 44 and he'd been retired for ages so he didn't deserve one based on any kind of ranking merit I really don't think you can make an argument against Sharapova um, not getting a wild card did I say that right I don't think you can argue that Sharapova should not get a wild card I think uh, Unless you argued that wildcard shouldn't exist at all, and then just uh, let ranking determine everything, that'd be something I'd listen to. Uh, another article: Connor McDavid and West Russell Westbrook, MVP candidates in different contexts. So, oh, wrong picture. That's arch enemy number one in Edmonton right now. Uh, but that's an April 29th article. Um, basically, in this article. I look at team play and how Russell Westbrook was so heavily relied on and his team went out in five games while Connor McDavid at that point had been pretty quiet in the playoffs and his team was uh, at, the, at that, the time of this article uh, Stanley Cup favorites I think they were for a, about a day and a half so really it just goes to show um, how important depth is so if you say that Russell Westbrook is about as good a basketball player as Connor McDavid is a hockey player I would actually say McDavid's probably better Westbrook's right now arguably the best player maybe the second third or fourth um, but uh, McDavid it's kind of a is he first or second and there's kind of a even a debate about whether he's first second third fourth all time already uh, you could call that premature, but uh, he's definitely gifted. But it just examines how a star player in one context does everything and the team loses, and a star player in another context does little but the team wins. So there's a, there's a interesting comparison and contrast there, I think. Here's one of the more popular articles I wrote. What is it about sex that sells? Um, <clears throat> I read an article at The Guardian, I guess about a week ago, looking at sex robots, and um, I, I didn't like some aspects of the article, and the, I don't believe, uh, I think that sex robots are kind of being personified in a lot of media commentary on them, um, and I'll just uh, take an excerpt here. Let's see, where is it? Neat picture there, eh? Okay, so this was, uh, I think her name was Jenny Kleeman at The Guardian. She wrote, Harmony smiles, blinks, and frowns. I would use an Oxford comma right there. She can hold a conversation, tell jokes, and quote Shakespeare. She'll remember your birthday, what you like to eat, and the names of your brothers and sisters. She can hold a conversation about music, movies, and books. And, of course, Harmony will have sex with you whenever you want. I don't like the use of the word she throughout that passage. Harmony, the robot, is an it, not a she. Now, if you understand what I mean there, um, Harmony is a masturbation toy, not something that's real, not a person, I mean. And I just go on to take a look at how people are kind of personifying, and that's uh, attributing human characteristics to something that's inanimate. And I, I think that sex robots could send men off the, off the deep end. Uh, if you get a really lonely man who thinks his robot wife really loves him, like, how messed up is this guy going to end up? So I call it a psychosis, um, which a Google search defined as a severe mental order in which thought and emotions are so impaired that contact is lost with external reality. So yeah, if a guy thinks that his sex robot is the real deal, like it's his wife because she can simulate conversation and simulate sex, which would basically be just an improved masturbation experience compared to a blow-up doll. Um, basically, 
the guys who are start thinking that she's real are gonna go nuts. And I forget what I say at the end here. Oh, I did this on purpose. I just I just put Maria Sharapova into the article for the keywords, um, but I had to have a reason. So in conclusion, here's a little riddle slash quasi logical syllogism for you. Look those words up if you want. Maria Sharapova is a woman. Harmony is a robot. A lot of men crush on her for her good looks. Who does the word her refer to in the passage above? Grammar rules that tie pronouns to the most recently used candidate word might have some saying harmony. But those not on the path to psychosis will finger wag. Harmony is an it, while Sharapova is a she. Mind your pronouns and stay in reality. So you gotta read the whole article to kind of get what I mean there maybe. But um, anyways, quasi, that means as if or seemingly. Um, syllogism, that's kind of like a logical puzzle. Um, so that's kind of what that is. Um, but basically, see the word her here? If you used vague pronoun reference kind of grammar rules, her would mean harmony. However, if you think her means harmony, that should be it, not her. Her means Sharapova. So, because the grammar rule is that it, it attaches to the most recent candidate word. So the trick is, does her refer to harmony or Sharapova? Well, if you think harmony is real when it's a robot, you might say that, but really that just means that you're out of touch with reality because harmony is an it, not a her. Um, but uh, it was a well-liked article. Let's see. It's hard to get reactions. Uh, only six people reacted. So 67% were amused, and I'll tap that up just to 75 because uh, I think it's funny. I honestly do. 13% um, were happy, and 13% uh, were excited. So... Glad I helped you out there, pal. Um, he was typing with one hand, I guess. Um, surfing the net with one hand. Um, 214 people tweeted this, 222 shares. That's pretty good for an article here. I noticed that it doesn't actually work perfectly, so like I just tweeted it and then I refresh and it doesn't, it still sticks at 222. Um, so I'm, I'm going to pretend that we can add a zero to that. So 2,220 shares. Check out that. Hubba hubba, eh? Like, okay. And let's see. This is what just kind of a news piece. Uh, short, uh, Nadal and Pui. Lucas Pui won the titles last weekend. I think Pui was in Budapest. Nadal was in Barcelona. Um, Nadal, French Open favorite, that's what I think. He, he didn't prove that much. The best did not have any good tur any good players in there. But Nadal beat Dominic Team in the final, and he pretty much whipped them. That could be a French Open final. If they're on the opposite side of the draw, then I wouldn't be surprised if Team and Nadal met in the final. If they're in the same quarter, I don't. I wouldn't be surprised if they met in the semifinal. <clears throat> um, but we'll see. Uh, those things are draw dependent. And here's a prediction article that uh, went wrong. I thought the Washington Capitals would get back into their series after Sidney Crosby had a concussion, uh, but they would lose game four, and they're behind 3-1. I think they play tomorrow. Um, but what is it with Washington, you know? I actually thought it would be different this year, but I never should have done that. Uh, I remember last year I wrote an article where I was saying how stupid it was to believe in Washington. They've got Ovechkin, who doesn't win a thing in playoffs or Olympics. He's, I don't know if he has an Olympic medal yet. I don't think so. Never made it past the second round of the NHL playoffs. And, you know, same old, same old. Their coach, what's his name, Barry Trotz, he just never wins a second round series. And he's been in the NHL as a coach since the late 90s, I think. He was in Nashville forever, and they never won a second round series. And look, lo and behold... He's gone for two seasons, and Nashville is about to get into the conference finals. They're up 3-1. Um, but I really thought that Washington was different this year, and uh, last year when I said they sucked, I, it was one of my most unpopular articles in terms of 
negative feedback. The traffic was fine, but the there was some a lot of negative feedback with that, and uh, I kind of sat on the sidelines with it, and then told them, I think I hear a pin drop when Washington did go out in the second round. Uh, but uh, I kind of hope that Washington come back, just because I like my predictions to be right. So 3-1 <clears throat> is an out of it. We've seen that before. Maybe maybe you have a 10-15% to 15 chance of still winning. I don't know, something like that. And here's one on the Edmonton Oilers. I call it the Oil Town Screwjob. NHL loses tons of credibility on May 3rd, 2017. Um, so I felt the Edmonton Oilers game was pretty iffy, to say the least, um, game four of their series. Like, <clears throat> how many NHL games do you watch and there's a controversial goal? It happens a lot, but to be honest, you can probably think of a lot of examples, but if you're honest with yourself, you can probably go three or four games, maybe five, before you see a really questionable goal like that's my experience it's like usually when a team scores they just go drop the puck at center ice and they play the next period of the game um stretch of the game but with the anaheim goals it's like any last last night that was a wednesday game whenever they scored it was like okay yeah but they were offside or they scored another goal and it's like okay yeah but they ran the goaltender or they scored another goal, and it's like, yeah, but they iced the puck. Why didn't they call it? And then you go to the footage, and the referee has his arm in the air, like he's going to call icing, and then all of a sudden he changes his mind. And then you got retired referees saying that was obvious goaltender interference. Well, he didn't use the word obvious, but here, Kerry Fraser. I thought there was sufficient contact and evidence to support coach's challenge and disallow the goal. So he's long long-term NHL referee that's retired, and... He's look, watching the game, and he thought that the call on the ice was wrong. And I just looked at uh, my opinion that the NHL could be promoting hockey in markets where it's not all that popular by with playoff results. Basically, I think maybe the NHL takes the Albertan hockey fan for granted and doesn't really care if the Edmonton Oilers stay in the playoffs as a result because Edmontonians or Calgarians or Northern Albertans, they're going to be watching the next round, even if the Oilers are out of it. Uh, but when it comes to California, well, they're not going to, they might not watch even if Anaheim's in it, to be honest. But a lot of people certainly will not watch if Anaheim's out. Um, and I thought the refereeing was kind of crummy and in favor of San Jose in the last round as well. Um, but that the Oilers were just so much better that they were able to persevere through that. And uh, you could take a look. Uh, here's one guy. that uh, He's a writer for the Edmonton Journal. I once knew a guy named David Staples. If, if this guy went to East Glen Commons at high school, I might know who he is personally. But otherwise, I don't know him. Um, so let me just find his tweet. I'll pause and find it. One second, I'll be right back. It'll seem like no time. Hello. I was actually gone for about 30 seconds, but uh, this screen recording, recording, voice recording software is, it, you don't hear the interruptions. I, I like that about it. Um, so David Staples, he writes for the Edmonton Journal, which is nothing but the mainstream corporate media. It used to be owned by Conrad Black, the Baron. Um, so, you know, you don't really get guys that challenge the status quo that much in there and look at what he's saying he's saying to hell with the nhl what a bullshit leak um that's a mainstream like writer who's swearing in his twitter tweet you don't get that a lot um but you know i wrote in this uh, plugged my article in there and I'll actually i'll see how it did yeah not too great um so, but I, but I like reading the fan reaction. It's like, I, David, sick of all the BS, PC media, on TV, and press who are too pansy and phony to keep it real and say what everyone sees. Um, so this guy, holy F, two bogus goals. 
And I was like, three bogus. And then he was like, yep. And he's like, I don't disagree, but as Flames fans, let me welcome you to the teams poorly treated by the NHL. He's like, welcome. This is me. Been like that for ages. So I participated in a lot of here. But, I, you know, a lot of the guys, their own, I'm assuming refs don't even know what goalie interference is. The, the big reaction, big reaction, I'm talking about maybe 90% in this thread is that the, the, the officiating has lost credibility. And that's what I talk about here. It's uh, the NHL is losing credibility. Um, you know, I do believe that not just the NHL, but also the NBA and professional tennis, the, the, the leagues and the organizations have preferred results. They are not neutral by any stretch. Um, and they face challenges with getting those preferred results because the games have to appear to be neutrally officiated. Uh, but I really think that what happened on May 3rd in Edmonton, 2017, was a case where they lost credibility. I think Anaheim basically got three goals. They should have lost 3-1. Three goals is huge in hockey. And, you know, it kind of reminded me, if anything, of the 2002 NBA Western Conference Finals. Uh, where the Sacramento Kings got screwed against the Los Angeles Lakers. And, you know, the Lakers fans, they've never owned up to that one. Don't expect the Anaheim fans to own up to it. But uh, if you want to read about more about what I thought there, you can go there. I'm planning on updating, doing an update like this every maybe a few times a month. Um, so just follow my channel if, you, if you're interested in any of those topics. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.